Welcome to Psychology Software Tools Tutorials. In today's tutorial, we will go over E'3 slider subobjects. The slider object is a slider subobject that will allow data to be logged through a slide object. Let's add a slide to any procedure and then add a slider to that slide. Let's resize the object and look into the subobject properties. The first property to be noted is, of course, the name, and we can leave it as is for now. In this value section, we have all the personalization settings for sliders. We have value min, which allows us to set the lowest slider slot. It's set to 1. We have value max, which shows our highest slot our slider will have. And we have value snap 2, and this has to do with the tick mark boxes to the direct right. When we set the value snap 2 to custom, we can change the value of the snaps or jumps a slider will move. The number of decimals will change the displayed number of decimal places shown on the slider, and that can be set up to three decimal places. Next is the value default, and that simply sets the slot at which the slider will begin. The tick mark section's defaults are set to 1 and 0.5, so let's change the minor tick marks to 0.1 instead, and we can see how this affects how the slider looks on the slide. Below the values section, we have the orientation section. In this section, we can set the layout of the slider, as well as the displaying order of the slider. To show these functions, we will change the layout to vertical, as well as reversed. This will show a slider going from the top to the bottom, as well as the highest to lowest. The accuracy section shows the accuracy, range, min, and max settings. These settings allow a creator of an experiment to set the acceptable, correct response range. Currently, it's set from 1 to 10, so all these responses are accepted and correct. Moving on to the frame tab, we will see the normal settings for slide objects. Let's make this slider full screen so we can see all the settings whenever we're changing them. Let's also center it. Now onto the largest tab, we have the appearance tab. The first section is the theme section. In the theme section, we have the parent theme, which is base slider. We can leave it as such. This can be changed to the theme editor, which we will discuss in a later video, but for now, just leave it as base slider. The tick mark section shows the customizability of sliders. The first box is position. This box indicates where the number's tick marks will be located, either above right, below left, or crossed, which is both. The label size option sets the size of the label associated with the tick marks to a percentage of the sub-object frame size, or to a fixed pixel size. So the label padding setting specifies the spacing between the label and the sub-object border. The major tick appearance visible will allow the tick marks to be seen. The color setting sets the color of the marks. The size sets the length of the tick marks. The thickness setting sets the width of the tick marks. The padding setting sets the space between the axis and the tick marks. The minor tick mark appearance section have identical settings to the major. So the indicator settings set the appearance of the item you're actually sliding on the slider. So the types are round and rectangle, and you can change the color to whatever you'd like. The font section of appearance is the same as every other object in E'. The font is consoleless, point size 18, not bold, italic, or underlined inherently. Again, this is just customizable to your liking. The value section has four properties. Visible, which can be set to yes or no. Position, which is set to above right or below left. The color and padding. Padding can be set to individual pixel numbers or a percentage from the top of the object. The axis section has a few settings. Axis, color, thickness, and padding. These change the color, the width of the slider's axis, and as well as the space between the edge of the slide and the slider. So we're going to close out of the slider subobject properties, and we're going to open up the slide properties. Now in the slide properties page, we're going to go to the general tab. We'll change the input sources uh, in the import source section from ACC to slider1 from input mask. And we'll do that for the RT and the RESP as well. Let's go to the duration input tab and change the duration to infinite. Let's add a button, and with that button, we will make the allowable next and then we'll change the end action to terminate. We'll press apply, and then we will create our button. So we'll close the properties page now. 
uh, and we will drop a button on the slide. We will change the name of that button to next. Let's run the experiment, enter our session and our subject number, press yes. And we can see now that the slider moves with a corresponding number on the top of the screen. And if we press the next button, it will terminate the slide. Thanks for watching this Psychology Software Tools tutorial. Be sure to subscribe, like, and comment what you'd like to see on our next how-to videos.